The Last Caretaker may seem like just another open world survival crafting game. In some ways it is that, but for the purpose of this video, it's the Unreal Engine 5.6 example that I've been waiting for. Unreal Engine 5.6 introduces much needed multi-threaded CPU optimizations for the engine that should improve the stuttering issues the engine is unfortunately known for. And unfortunately, we haven't had many examples to look into. The first game I found that we looked at on this channel was SpongeBob SquarePants Titans of the Tide demo, and I was really impressed. Even though the game didn't use all of the UE5 features, it ran extremely smooth on a high-end and a budget CPU. I said in that video that I wanted to look at more examples, especially a game that's open world with Neonite and Lumen, and The Last Caretaker is this example. In this video, we'll look at a high-end build RTX 4090 and Ryzen 9800X3D at 4K, and also a six-year-old Ryzen 3700X with an RX 9060 XT. The game uses Lumen quite well. The ray trace reflections bring all the different materials to life with excellent lighting as well. And it also has a pretty interesting premise. It's kind of like Waterworld in some ways. You play an android whose purpose is to create human babies and launch them into space to the human colony because humans can't reproduce in space apparently but things have gone wrong and you have to get the facility back online and travel in your boat from facility to facility in an ocean covered world now keep in mind that this is still an unreal engine 5 game so it will be demanding but we're going to start here at 4k native resolution taa 100 percent with all the settings on epic now i'm not going to focus much on the mechanics of the game or crafting or anything like that although we will be doing some of that but this is just the beginning again my main focus here is performance and frame time consistency and the 4090 does pretty well i mean we're getting around 50 fps or so at native 4k with lumen and everything cranked to the max i think that's actually pretty good we are looking at frame time consistency that is what Unreal Engine 5.6 among many other things aims to fix now the game is in early access and it just came out at 35 dollars it might seem a little bit steep but there is a demo available guys that's what we're looking at here is the demo and i suggest checking it out you don't really have much to lose but i've been impressed so far it does seem like a high quality game that's been made with quite a bit of passion i mean i haven't run into any bugs or anything like that there's a quest that kind of guides you around but i'd say there is a little bit of satisfactory in there maybe there's a lot of components that you can break down for different materials and craft components to craft bigger machinery and then power things so it is quite intricate probably take a little bit of getting used to it if you're into these type of games a lot of things to unlock and skills and stuff like that but Again, this is an Unreal Engine 5 game. And if you're familiar with Unreal Engine 5 game, there is ways you can tweak some settings to gain extra performance without even having to use any upscaling. Because I know there's some people out there that don't like to use upscaling. Well, let's check it out. So currently we're at 50 FPS, everything cranked to the max at native 4K. Shadow quality, global illumination quality, and reflections quality tend to be some of the heaviest settings in pretty much all Unreal Engine 5 games, especially if they use Lumen. So if we drop those from epic to high, we see a massive gain in performance, guys, just like we do in other Unreal Engine 5 games, while the image quality remains more or less very similar. So definitely worth getting that extra performance if you need it. Going from 50 to 70 FPS, it's a huge jump. It's quite massive. Keeping an eye on the 1% lows and the frame time graph looks excellent. No stuttering or anything any hiccups no shaders no traversal no nothing it all looks pretty good and we can do native 4k if we wanted to with this build but personally i'm a big fan of upscaling and dlss has come such a long way along with fsr4 as well that it makes sense not to use it so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to putting everything on epic 
and use some DLSS. Now the game does have support for all the other upscalers as well. You do have FSR with FSR frame generation. You have XCSS with XCSS frame generation by the looks of it. So everything is supported here. Like I said, as an early access game, it runs well, it looks good, and all the features seem to be there. But anyway, with DLSS quality, everything back on Epic, we're getting excellent performance. As a matter of fact, we're getting pretty much the same exact performance we were getting at native 4K, but with shadows, reflections, and GI set to high. So just dropping those three settings is more or less equivalent to turning on DLSS alone. So yeah, Unreal Engine 5 may be graphically demanding, especially when Lumen is being used, but with some settings tweaks, you can gain a lot of extra performance, as you can clearly see here. Again, I can't emphasize enough how much I like ray traced reflections and not just the way they used to be when ray tracing was first introduced where you just get, I don't know, shiny glass, but good ray traced reflections like they are in this game can add a lot of depth and realism to different materials. Like metals will reflect things differently. Dirty surfaces will reflect things differently. Different types of paint can reflect things differently. And in this game, you can sort of see how good of a job that does and i also love the crafting part of it as well you do have these machines where you can just grind your junk into different materials but you can even take objects you can pretty much pick up any object in the game the physics part of it is very well done and you can just throw it in that grinder and it'll spit out the materials that it's made out of so that you can use it in your crafting and again you can see how good of a job all the different reflections do and i'm the type of player who likes to take my time playing the games i do stop and smell the roses sometimes too frequently taking screenshots just appreciating the art and the visuals that the, all these talented developers are able to create i mean it's all a part of getting immersed right i mean i do value immersion and immersion can sometimes be a little bit difficult you know when you have an engine that tends to stutter at times so yeah it's just nice to see how much Unreal Engine 5.6, I mean, so far seems to improve that because we have really good performance here. Well, let's go ahead and try some DLSS performance. DLSS quality was able to keep us between 70 and 80, depending on the area. The interior areas tend to be a little bit more demanding here. We're at 75 FPS or so with DLSS quality and we'll drop it to DLSS performance. And now we jump all the way up to 90 something FPS, so close to 100 FPS. And our frame times look really good. 1% low still look really good. Now we're putting more of a burden on the CPU. And if you guys watch my videos or Digital Foundry, sometimes when the game does have some performance issues, especially with Unreal Engine 5 or even 4 games, if you put more burden on the CPU or run CPU bound, it can actually make the stuttering even worse. And what we're seeing here is perfectly smooth frame time. So I don't know guys, but really 5.6 is seems to be a blessing here because uh, all of us have been really worried about Unreal Engine 5.6 and how quickly studios are adapting it. So there you have it guys. The improvements are clearly there, at least to me. Frame time fluidity is excellent, has been, whether we're targeting native 4K all the way down to DLSS performance on this pretty high-end build. But how will it all hold up on a six-year-old Ryzen 3700X with an RX 9060 XT? And that's what we're running here, guys. Ryzen 3700X on a Strix B550F gaming Wi-Fi motherboard, 32 gigs of RAM, RX 9060 XT 16 gigabyte. Now, unfortunately, this game does not have cloud save, so we have to start from the beginning, but that's okay. We're only interested in the performance, but we're going to start at 1080p, 100% resolution scale, TAA, with the epic graphical preset. So essentially, it's the same thing we did on the 4090 PC at 4K. We're doing here at 1080p. And the performance, guys, was actually really good. The 1% lows remain in the 50s with an average of around 70 FPS through the playthrough in this tutorial area of the game. Now, keep in mind that this is the first, very first time that I run this game on this computer because I just downloaded it and installed it. And I also just installed a fresh driver copy of the latest AMD driver. 
Now we do hit a tiny little hitch here, but that's pretty much it. It's nothing that you see happen ever again. It does remain consistently fluid. And I find this to be quite impressive because I've looked at other Unreal Engine 5 games, older Unreal Engine 5 games on this same CPU, like Oblivion Remaster, for example. It's a disaster on this CPU, right? It's very stuttery. And this one, actually, it does remain pretty fluid. Again, the 1% lows remain consistently in the 50s. Now, the only thing that's kind of unrelated to this, but when it comes to Unreal Engine 5, I'm playing at 1080p. Even on a native 1080p display, which is what I'm using here, the game does look a bit noisier, and I believe it has something to do with the lumen and the fact that we're at such low resolution to begin with. The denoising, it's not as effective as when you're targeting 1440p or 4K. So you'd probably be better off, even if you have a 1080p display, to run the game at 1440p and then use like FSR quality or DLSS quality or something like that. I think you would probably get a bit cleaner image uh, than uh, one that's a bit more noisier. But anyway, I digress. It's not really the point or the focus of this video. Considering we are running the game with all the settings on Epic, yeah, it's 1080p, but I think the 9060 XT, as far as GPU power goes, I think it's actually doing pretty well. So let's go ahead and try some FSR quality. I want to try to put more of a load on the CPU and see how it holds up. That usually tends to cripple CPUs, especially older ones. And we'll keep all the other settings on Epic, of course. So PPC, we're getting around 60 FPS or so. And now we're getting close to the 90s, guys. And yeah, we're all entering and seeing these areas for the very first time. Uh, the frame time graph might look a little bit jittery, but those are very tiny tiny increments you don't really feel those at all and i will show you in the end how you can lock it to be perfectly smooth if you wanted to but still getting around 80 fps average with around 51 percent lows that's pretty good Just keep in mind that this is a zen 2 8 core six year old gaming cpu so i think this is a huge improvement but what does look a bit shitty <laughs> pardon my french is well fsr quality at 1080p does not look very good it looks quite smeary now you do have the option to mod in uh, update scaler of course i didn't have time to do that because it's not really the focus of this video but if you were to do that it would definitely look a lot cleaner now from what i can see uh, we're definitely reaching the limits of the capability of the ryzen 3700x looking at gpu power consumption and overall utilization between the both of them but let's go ahead and throw on fsr performance as well just to stress the cpu out as much as we possibly can around 70 to 80 fps is what we were getting with fsr set to quality and dropping fsr to performance now we still getting around the same frame rate except that we're now consuming less power on our gpu so we're clearly cpu bound here performance still remains relatively smooth it got a little bit more jittery but that's not that bad it's again very small and tiny increments no major stuttering or anything like that so for a six-year-old cpu which wasn't even the fastest gaming cpu when it launched i think it holds up pretty well again we're dealing with an unreal engine 5 game that uses lumen but a cleaner more consistent way to play would be to go back to 1080p native taa that way you don't have to use fsr if you don't want to and just go to the graphics settings and drop shadows reflections and gi from epic to high and you will be all set it'll be the same thing as if you're using fsr quality but you get better image quality and by locking the frame rate to 60 you now have a consistently locked fluid gaming experience so yeah guys this is the second example of unreal engine 5.6 game that we look at on the channel the first one spongebob titans of the tide looked very promising it was very smooth but that game wasn't using all the ue5 features this one does and overall cpu utilization and frame time consistently remains well consistent could ue5.6 be the update that turns things around for ue5 does it mean that stuttering is a thing of the past with ue5 games in the future i mean i love what i'm seeing but i still think it's a bit early to tell 
UE 5.6 games are still slowly making their way out there and I think we need a few more examples, especially something that's a little bit bigger and triple A. What do you all think though? Leave a comment down below, let me know. Thanks for watching, give the video a like if you liked it and subscribe if you want to see more similar content. I'll talk to you all later. Bye.